In this video, we're going to take a look at DAXUB, which is a platform for data scientists and machine learning engineers. DAXUB allows you to version your data, models, experiment, and also code. And the great thing is that you could collaborate with your data science teams where you could share, review, and also reuse your work. And without further ado, let's jump right into the tutorial. So let's head over to dapsub.com. And before continuing, let's consider some of the common problems that we face when collaborating on data science projects. As we know, data science and machine learning has made significant advancements in recent years. And this is thanks to the ongoing collaborations throughout the community. Some of the pillar technologies such as Git enables code to be versioned and shared amongst the contributors. Such Git technologies significantly benefits software development and also data science. In spite of this, data science teams still find it hard to collaborate. And this could be attributed to the fact that Git was made for the version control of code and data to a certain extent. But what happens when the data becomes larger and larger? And that is where data version control or DVC comes in. And so Git and DVC are both complementary technologies that would greatly benefit the data science workflow. But setting it up poses a great challenge. And there's this web platform that aims to solve this problem. And the platform is known as Dapsub, which happens to be the sponsor of this video. And so when Dapsub reached out to collaborate on this, I thought it would be a great opportunity to explore and take a deeper dive into Dapsub. In a nutshell, Dapsub is a web platform that is based on open source tools, which is optimized for data science and is oriented towards the open source community. It is a central location where projects can be hosted, discovered, and collaborated on by contributors. And the great thing about it is that it enables machine learning and data science community to create, manage, and share their projects. In simple terms, it looks and works very much like GitHub or Bitbucket, but instead of being focused on software development, it is made for machine learning engineers and data scientists, as well as other data professionals. It should also be mentioned that DAPSUB is free to use, and you could sign up by going to DAPSUB.com. All right, and so let's take some time to explore the DAPSUB platform. So if you head over to DAPSUB.com, you'll come over to this page. And let's start by clicking on the Start Now or the Sign Up. And you could either sign in using your Google account or your GitHub account. So I'll do that. And now we're good to go. So you're going to see here the Getting Started menu here. You could connect your existing projects from GitHub. You could also explore an example project. Or you could also follow a tutorial that will guide you to build your first data science project. So here we're going to skip it for now. And this is our dashboard. And since we haven't yet already created any repository, it's going to be this empty. So before creating our own, let's take a look at the community and see and explore. Click on explore. So here you're going to see all of the repositories and conveniently there are tags from which you could filter the repo. For example, if you're interested in reproducibility, click on it and only repo that has the reproducibility challenge tag is displayed here. We could untick and scroll down and the tags are conveniently categorized into general, into the task such as classification, computer vision, sentiment analysis, image classification, and 488 more. It is also categorized based on the data domain, whether it is a tabular data, audio, text data, image, and also which machine learning framework was used for the project, and also which of the integrations provided by DAPSUB are used in the repo. For example, let's take a look at this repo here. So you're going to see here that it looks very much like GitHub. And you can see here that this particular repo was taken from a GitHub repo of Kuyen Tran. Let's have a look at the repo. So in GitHub, you probably will notice that the first thing that you see is a readme.md file. But in DAXUB, you get to see this data pipeline. So all of the data files that are in your repo, it could be best summarized by this single data pipeline image, which shows the interconnectivity of the underlying data and code 
in your repo and it is also conveniently color coded according to the various elements and underneath the pipeline here you're going to see the typical readme and qyen did a very good job of structuring this readme file and she's also a prolific blogger on the medium platform publishing in top publications such as towards data science Right, and then you can leave some comments here. So this is the all tab. So all of the files are shown. If you click on data, you're going to see only the data file. If you click on models, you're going to see only the pickled model file. Click on notebooks, you're going to see only the notebook. And DVC, so you're going to see that all of these data were version controlled using DVC. And also for Git. So you're going to see that Git and DVC here are integrated within DAXUB. And let's try to click on the remote button here. So on GitHub, you're going to see something that looks like this. It should also be mentioned that in GitHub, you only get a Git remote. But then here in DAXUP, you get two additional ones, which includes the one for DVC for tracking your data files and one for MLflow for tracking your machine learning experiments. And if you copy it, and so here's the URL address to the repos DAG sub storage, which is an object storage automatically configured and connected to the repo and can be managed with DVC. And MLflow here is provided so that you could track your machine learning experiments. And if you don't know how to proceed with this, you could click on the question mark and then it provides you the command lines that you could just copy and paste directly into your terminal. And then you could click here to see your token or password and then copy and paste into your terminal. Same for your ML flow. I really think that this is the best part of DAXUB in that it really does the DevOps heavy lifting for its users. And by doing so, it helps to lower the barrier to entry for ML ops tools. Let's have a look at the branches here. We have the master branch, and then let's have a look at the workshop. So this allows you to compare different branches and looking at the underlying file structures and seeing which files or directories are present in which version, either the master or the workshop version. So you're going to see here that only the DVC directory here are present in both, but then the GitHub one was not present in the workshop. Config data image model notebook were not present in the workshop. And steps here are only in the workshop, but not in the master. So it allows you to have a look at the high level view comparing the different branches, which comes in handy. All right, and so let's head over back to explore. Click on models, and then you could explore decks of based on the models that are provided on the platform. You could click on data sets, and then you could see for the various data sets that are here, which repos are available. Let's have a look at this project, which contains images of the lung x-ray for detecting pneumonia. So it is forked from near. Let's go to the original repo. So you're gonna see here that upon coming to this repo, you're going to be guided by a step-by-step -step tutorial. So it is for classifying chest x-ray images for pneumonia. So as I've already shown you, if you click on the various tabs here, you're going to see the various data, data types. So here you're going to see only text files. You're going to see only the models here. You're going to see the notebook files, data that are version controlled using DVC and also Git. Scroll down and then you're going to see the data pipeline, which explains the various interdependencies of of the project, how all of the various files here are interconnected with one another. And this is the README and it's written using Markdown. All right, so let's click on data. Let's click on samples. Click on an image. So this is one of the image of the data. This is the metadata. You're going to notice that this cursor has plus cursor that allows you to essentially annotate the image. As you can see, once I highlighted a particular region, it automatically goes to the comments section and allows me to type in my comments. Like for example, what is this? And then you could click on add comment sample. You could say, what is this? Click on preview and it'll look like what is this? And then it has the image. You could also do it like that, right? Until you're satisfied with which particular region you wanna highlight, annotate, and then you could just, you know, add additional files, links, data, tables, and then you could format the text 
using the various elements here and then click on add comment. Okay, and another great thing is you could also compare the data from the various branches. Like, let's say that if you have an image that has the same file name, you could then compare those two images with one another and see how they are different or similar to one another. Okay, so that might come in handy, right? So you could toggle between the file compare or the directory compare, okay? So it also works for tabular data, image data as well, right? And so let's head over to the experiments tab, right? And so you're gonna see various models and the various accuracies and performance metrics, and they are tracked by ML flow. So you wanna take this model and this model and then compare it. And then you're gonna see both models being compared. So you're making use of the trapped machine learning models via MLflow. And you can look at the various parameters, how they differ from one another, and also in terms of the performance metrics. There's also this plot for you to visually discern the differences between the two. And so you're gonna notice that both essentially has the same accuracy, loss, LR, validation accuracy, but differ in the validation loss. And here are the charts for the various performance metrics. So all of them had essentially the same value, except for the validation loss, which is only slightly different. So you could also untick elements that you don't wanna see, and it'll only show what you wanna have a look at. Okay, let's try again. Okay, so you could compare multiple models. Let's try it three or four or five. Compare it, and then you can see all five models at a glance and in one plot. So very convenient, right? You don't even have to code your own implementation of the plot. You could just click on the models that you wanna compare and boom, you got this at a glance. Very convenient. all models compared for you. And you could download it as well. Click here. And then you get the plot. So this also works very much like GitHub. So the community could also post issues here. They could also contribute to your project. You could also have some wiki to provide information about the project. The contributors could also discuss points about the project. And also you could annotate the data. So let me try to fork this project. Fork the repository here. All right, and so now it's in my repo. Click on annotation, turn on. All right, and so it's starting up. All right, and so it's ready now. Click on the ready button. So here, if you want to annotate your data, you could also do so. You could click here on the plus symbol, and then you give your project a name. For example, call it project five, create project, and then give it some time, and it will walk you through. Click on create here to start, and then you can click on the particular subfolder which contains your data. Say I wanna click on only this first folder, or how about this, click on image five, click on save. All right, and so it's here, and then you could go ahead and select on the images that you would like to annotate or you could click here and select all of them label all right and so let's go to setup and then you could browse some of the templates that they have here and depending on your project you want to select something that's suitable for your task conveniently they are categorized here since your data is images then you could try one of the following here Okay, so I'll leave that up to you. So then we're back to the pneumonia classification repo. And so as I've already mentioned, the layout looks very much like GitHub, but it comes with all of the amenities and tools that will augment your data science workflow. For example, the ability to compare project from different point in time, different versions of the same file, or comparing different files, or even comparing models via the tracked experiments. 
or also you know just doing pull requests contributing to the project posting issues which is similar to github but then experiment tracking and annotation is something new that dexup is providing and it allows you to also communicate with your contributors of the project in the discussion tab here and I think the data pipeline summary image here is really neat. It summarizes in a single image. And then you could, you know, pan the image, zoom in, zoom out. And this helps to get a high level glimpse of what the entire project is about, the flow of it. And from within this graphical user interface, you could add new files by creating one or you could upload a file. Or if you're preferring to do it in the terminal, there's instructions for you to do so, as I have already mentioned. And then you could set various settings of your repo here, collaborations, deploy key webhooks, branches, collaborators, even photos for this repo, and also other configurations as well. So we could see that Dexup has put a lot of effort in introducing tools for streamlining and wrapping up projects into an integrative and comprehensive workflow that goes nicely with the git flow all right so let's take a look at how you could create your own project so you could click on create you could create a new project here click on new repository and there are templates for you to choose from let's try out the Jupyter notebook and DVC give it a name sample Jupyter DVC I'll make it public create repository there you go this is the example repository okay this is the readme contributors to the project could click on the remote here and they could follow the instructions provided here to get started this one too. You could also star it or fork it, very much like GitHub. And another great thing is that Dexa provides very generous storage capability for your projects. So a typical storage limit for GitHub projects would be approximately 500 megabytes. But for DAXA project, let's have a look here in the price. The community tier, which is free, provides up to 10 gigabytes of storage on DAXUP storage. And you could have three collaborators in your private projects and you could create unlimited private repositories and unlimited public repositories. And there are various other features that will help your data science workflow. And if you're coming from academia, you could reach out to them. All right, let's head over back to the profile. All right, now we have populated with two projects. Let's click here, not sure what to do. And then it brings you to the getting started page. And I've already shown you how you could create a repository or you could also connect it to your GitHub repo. And then it will ask for your authorization. And after approving so, you could import some of the repo from your GitHub account. I'll leave that up to you. If you watched this far into the video, please drop a dog emoji so that I know that you're the real one. And while you're at it, please like the video, subscribe if you haven't already, hit on notifications to be notified of the next video. And as always, the best way to learn data science is to do data science. And please enjoy the journey.